multiple myeloma is the topic for this video and I want to give a brief um, review of the types of blood cells that we're going to be talking about. Remember lymphocytes branch out into T and B cells and B cells differentiate into plasma cells and plasma cells produce antibodies and antibodies are also known as immunoglobulins Ig and immunoglobulins are at the heart of multiple myeloma. Why? Because multiple myeloma is a cancer of these plasma cells and when that happens you get the production of large quantities of immunoglobulins and those immunoglobulins go on to destroy bone tissue and that's the main problem that you experience and the average age of someone with multiple myeloma is about 65 so we're talking about the senior population so let's talk about the pathophysiology of multiple myeloma essentially you have these malignant plasma cells and they produce these immunoglobulins large quantities of them and you have IgG about 55 percent of the time you also have IgA about 20 percent of the time and there's others as well now these immunoglobulins go on to destroy bone and what that does is it results in osteoporosis and in particular what we're talking about is these very specific lesions that you will see on x-rays known as osteolytic lesions you can see them in the pelvis you can see them in the spine you can see them in the ribs and also in the skull now why does this happen the reason is because these malignant plasma cells activate osteoclasts and osteoclasts as most of you know are responsible for bone resorption now the immunoglobulin structure is something that I really wanted to make sure you understand because it's important what I've drawn here essentially are two heavy chains and two light chains the big ones are the heavy chains in black and the blue are known as the light chains now the light chains have two types there's kappa and there's lambda now this whole molecule is referred to as an M protein but if you find these light chains just by themselves they are given a special name and that's called Bentz Jones protein now why is this important because in multiple myeloma these light chains can go and deposit into the kidney and when that happens you develop renal failure which is one of the biggest aspects of multiple myeloma in addition to the bone destruction now when you do have bone resorption by the osteoclasts this releases calcium from the bone into the bloodstream and the reason is because 99 percent of the calcium in our body is in our blood so when the bones are resorbed all the calcium starts coming out into the bloodstream now that of course produces hypercalcemia and when you have hypercalcemia that also contributes to the renal failure so please keep that in mind and also keep in mind that these free light chains by themselves can be found in the blood and in the urine and they are given a special name known as Bentz Jones protein now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma the first one that I wanted to discuss is recurrent bacterial infections now why do you get recurrent bacterial infections 
Well, the reason is because in multiple myeloma, you are in a state of immune deficiency. Why is that? Because the immunoglobulins or antibodies that are being produced by those plasma cells are actually ineffective. And that's why the immune system is not working properly. And because the immune system is not working properly, the person will be more prone to getting bacterial infections. The next part of the symptomatology involves bone pain. And why? And that is simply because of the fractures. All those fractures are occurring because the malignant plasma cells are activating those osteoclasts, and the osteoclasts are essentially resorbing the bone. And the last type of sign and symptom I wanted to uh, talk about is anemia. Now, why is anemia happening? And the reason for that is because of renal failure. Remember we talked about how the calcium and the light chains can deposit in the kidney and cause renal failure. And remember, renal failure results in decreased erythropoiesis. Remember, erythropoietin is produced by the kidney, and erythropoietin essentially helps build red blood cells. Now let's talk about the diagnosis. Fortunately, to help you remember a lot of this information, there is a mnemonic that helps with remembering the diagnostic tests involved. The C is for calcium, and as we discussed, there is a state of hypercalcemia, so this will be elevated. The R is for renal failure, and that can be checked, of course, by just measuring the BUN and creatinine, and those will be elevated. The A is for anemia, and that can be checked with a simple CBC. And the B is for bone lesions, and that is seen on x-rays when you do a skeletal survey. Now, one thing I wanted to mention that's very important is the morphology of the red blood cells. How do they look in multiple myeloma? In multiple myeloma, they actually appear as stacks like this. These red blood cells are appearing in stacks, and that is given a special name. It's called Rouleau formation and that's often mentioned on uh, clinical vignettes. And then the final test I wanted to mention is actually a very important one. It's serum protein electrophoresis or urine protein electrophoresis. Now what is that? Those are tests essentially to try to detect these immunoglobulins. Remember, they're going to be in high quantity because the plasma cells are malignant and they're producing these immunoglobulins. Now, if they're seen in their full form, they're given a special name. They're called M proteins. But if they're just as light chains, if they're just as free light chains, then they're given that name that I mentioned earlier, which is Benz Jones protein. And about 80 to 90 percent of the time, it'll be an M protein that you see on these S PEP and U PEP tests. And the Benz Jones protein will probably be seen about 10 to 20 percent of the time. Treatment? Well, it's a cancer, so cornerstone of treatment is chemotherapy. And some of the chemotherapy agents are thalidomide. And there's another one that's used, bortezomib. But what's more important, especially for licensing exams, is treating the complications. How do you treat those? So first I'll list the complications. You've got anemia. You've got hypercalcemia. You've got renal insufficiency or renal failure. Infections. And the skeletal lesions. Now for the anemia, of course, you can give erythropoietin as an injection and that will help build red blood cells. That's very commonly done. Hypercalcemia and renal failure are treated with IV fluids. Hydration is a very important part. Infections, of course, treated with antibiotics. Skeletal lesions are actually treated with a bisphosphonate medication known as pamidronate.
And what that does is it helps slow the bone loss and it also puts calcium back into the bone. So that is the treatment. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. 65 year old woman complains of pain in her back and chest with localized tenderness at the spine of T8 and rib cage pain with tenderness at the seventh rib. Patient appears to be quite pale and admits to fatigue. These symptoms have come on gradually over a period of several weeks with the back pain becoming the reason for consulting the physician. A dip UA shows proteinuria, screening CBC shows anemia with hemoglobin of 8. Marked low formation, normal platelets and white cells. Serum chemistry shows calcium elevation, normal ALKFOS. Plain x-rays show a fracture of the right 7th rib, compression of the 8th vertebra. What is the most likely diagnosis? Well, you've got all the, all the things that uh, multiple myeloma has. You have the anemia, you've got the hypercalcemia. Um, I think we have all of CRAB in here. Hypercalcemia is there. Uh, you've got the anemia. You've definitely got the bone lesions. So that's definitely uh, multiple myeloma. They also mentioned this classic Rollo formation, which is how the red blood cells look. So there's no doubt that it's choice C. Next question. 78-year-old woman is admitted to the hospital because of fever, productive cough, and chest x-ray demonstrating right lower lobe consolidation. Past medical history is significant for seasonal allergies. She has been taking uh, hormone replacements since menopause 19 years ago and occasional acetaminophen. Patient lives alone at home and does not drink alcohol or smoke. Reveal systems is significant for weakness attributed to old age. On the day prior to discharge, a repeat chest x-ray shows pneumonia to be resolving. An incidental note is made of severe osteoporosis involving all of the bones visualized on the film. Vital signs show a fever of 38, blood pressure 100, pulse 90, respiration is 10. Physical exam is significant only for decreased best sounds at the right lung base. Patient is neurologically intact and wants to return home. Lab studies show leukocyte count of 15,000, hematocrit of 28, platelets 150. Next step in management is, well, this patient has severe osteoporosis. Even though she's on hormone replacement therapy, she's also got this infection, and then she's got anemia. So this is all kind of making you think of a possible a multiple myeloma type situation. And if that is indeed the case, then she definitely should have that serum protein electrophoresis test to check either the M proteins or the Bench Jones proteins. And finally, 55 year old African American man is seen in the emergency room with two day history of hematuria, back pain, double vision, and altered mental status. He is an engineer with an office based occupation, no exposure to chemicals or radiation. Family history is positive for an uncle with bone cancer. He smokes half a pack of cigarettes a day but does not drink alcohol. Lab exam in the emergency department shows elevated total protein, elevated gamma globulins, serum creatinine of 2.5, hemoglobin of 9. Blood smear shows rouleau formation, you suspect. Well, again, very classic rouleau description. He's got anemia, he's got renal failure, and um, no doubt a suspicion at least of multiple myeloma should definitely be there.